Oh, welcome to the morning after live right here on Sports Grid and Sirius XM channel 159, the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM all across the Sports Grid Network. I am Ben Stevens. What a Wednesday show we have in store for you. It is the full off day in the Major League Baseball All-Star break. It gives us a time to reset and preview the second half of the Major League Baseball regular season. The home stretch in the playoff push. Looking at new odds available on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Updated win totals. Make playoff odds once again to track where your favorite team might be as we get ready for the second half of this MLB campaign. It also gives us a time as around the NFL training camp is starting to open up as rookies report across the league. We'll look at the NFL futures with our guy Mike Blewett a little bit later on in this opening hour. But we begin with a recap of last night at the Major League Baseball All-Star Game. The Midsummer Classic in Los Angeles inside Dodger Stadium for the first time in 42 years. The last All-Star Game to take place inside Dodger Stadium was all the way back in 1980. And we had some of that Hollywood drama last night. The American League continues its dominance over the National League in the Midsummer Classic. The AL wins last night by a final score of 3-2. to two, The ninth straight victory for the American League in the All-Star Game. It has been two decades and a half of dominance for the AL. Not just their ninth straight win in that All-Star Game, but the 21st for the American League in the last 25 All-Star Games. The NL has only won three times in that 25-year span. There was a tie back in 2002 as well. And the American League, despite all of the history and all of the trends that said it should have been the side to bet last night. The AL was booked as a slight underdog, minus 102, that final money line price. The National League was actually the underdog on the run line, getting the run and a half. They do cover, but you had to pay minus 205 in terms of juice if you wanted to back the NL on the run line last night. 3-2, to two, the final in favor of the American League. The total stays under 7.5, the third straight under. The fifth time in the last six years staying under the total we saw last night for an over-under of 7.5. The 11th time in the last 16 years we have stayed under 7.5 in the All-Star game. So very strong trends despite it being an exhibition event for an All-Star game for you to know for your handicapping moving forward in 2023. So again, the first All-Star game at Dodger Stadium in 42 years, and we didn't really get much offense on either side. The American League and the National League both staying under their team totals, both booked at three and a half entering the game. The American League ends with three runs, all coming in the top half of the fourth inning. Back-to-back home runs from Giancarlo Stanton and Byron Buxton that we'll get to in just a moment. But getting the start inside Dodger Stadium, the lengthy career of Clayton Kershaw. Very historic career for Kershaw. And he gets his first start in an all-star game last night in front of the home crowd. And Clayton Kershaw started the game off against Shohei Otani. Shohei, right before stepping up to the dish in a pregame interview, said first pitch, first swing. And that's exactly what he did. And that's what we detailed for you yesterday as we ended out the show handicapping the all-star game. That first pitch outcome any other outcome besides a strike, a foul tip, or a ball was plus 550. So thank you to Shohei Otani for swinging at the first pitch and opening the game up with a single. A welcome to our Sports Grid Radio audience here, the opening hour of a Wednesday live on the morning after on Sports Grid. Sirius XM, Channel 159, all of our terrestrial radio affiliates as well. I am Ben Stevens, Clayton Kershaw. The start in front of the home crowd, Los Angeles Dodgers. Faithful last night in his first all-star game start and he had a k prop up there of just the hook 0.5 for that strikeout prop last night the over was heavily juiced as you see pregame at minus 182 but despite kershaw giving up that opening single to shohei otani he pitched shohei off at first base otani a little bit too much in his lead off first and then a strikeout for kershaw after that going over in his one inning of work. Sandy Alcantara was fantastic. Alec Manoa was great on the bump for the American League as well, spelling the starter for the AL in Shane McClanahan. He was mic'd up, speaking to the booth of Joe Davis and John Smoltz, all of the fun festivities we had at the All-Star game. But the All-Star game, Giancarlo Stanton, a two-run bomb 
for the American League in the top of the fourth inning that tied the game and then followed by Byron Buxton in that next at-bat. Those were the only runs the AL scored, three in the top half of the fourth inning. But that two-run bomb for Giancarlo Stanton traveled 457 feet, the longest home run hit at Dodger Stadium this season. So Giancarlo Stanton becomes the third Yankee ever to win the All-Star Game MVP alongside Derek Jeter in 2000 and Mariano Rivera in 2013. And as you can see in those pregame All-Star MVP odds that we'll show here in just a moment, Giancarlo Stanton, a pretty good price there at 13 to 1. In fact, that fourth inning two-run blast for Giancarlo in front of his hometown crowd, he is originally from Los Angeles, was the first hit that Giancarlo Stanton has had in an All-Star game, previously 0 for 6, and this was the first time representing the pinstripes in the All-Star game as well after being acquired from the Miami Marlins back in 2018. So that's what we had at the All-Star game last night. This is the only full off day we have during the All-Star break in Major League Baseball. Time to reset and look around the bigs. A second half preview and where we stand in MLB up next. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell and coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley comes over there. Give me the game pass. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game everybody. live I all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bama. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game Four live wins. prime oh, yeah, time. In game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get begins. the winning edge only on Sports Grid. The early line. Do you think a Big 12, Pac-12 merger would have made sense? No, I don't. I don't. Because when you add more teams in, Kevin, you're going to divvy up more pieces of the pie. It's the reason why you see these big guys leaving. And we're looking right now at these Pac-12 teams, Kevin, and saying to ourselves, what are you actually bringing to the table to the Big 12? Apparently not enough. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. A Yerfi or a Nerfi, Kev? Well, the Nerfi is the favored side tonight at minus 136 to stay under that half run total in the opening frame. Do you agree that maybe we won't see a run early on? I agree that it should be the favorite. I think if you made me bet it, though, I actually might be inclined to yep. touch the yes. I, I, yep. I do. I look at the National League lineup and it's all righties. The Sports Grid Network. Sports professor Rick Harrow with your daily numbers game from Inverness, Scotland, heading to the British Senior Open. But we focus on gaming and we focus on Florida and look at the briefing schedule for the appellate court in the case about the constitutionality of the Indian Gaming Ruling Act, which has been held unconstitutional. About 45 days of legal gaming before the courts shut it down. And now they're in a position of trying to figure out whether or not they will allow it but the briefing schedule is in the summer, well into the fall, and even into next year. So no avail on the speed of this. Same time, FanDuel DraftKings estimated $37 million overall to put into this pot to try to generate dollars for signatures. Those signatures didn't work either. And at the end of the day, there is no process for gaming that will involve Florida in the near future.
So after the Major League Baseball All-Star Game, we have one full day off from Major League Baseball action. Only one. We get back underway with games for the second half of the season tomorrow across Major League Baseball. It's a very short All-Star break here in the mid summer portion of the MLB schedule and we'll look at this second half reset now live on the morning after on this Wednesday on Sports Grid. by the way last night a couple of more things to tidy up from a betting perspective for the all-star game it was the National League that scored first they scored two in the home half of the first inning a Mookie Betts RBI single that scored Ronald Acuna Jr and then a Paul Goldschmidt long ball inside Dodger Stadium off Shane McClanahan Goldie the favorite right now to win the National League MVP award so the NL went up to nothing I just heard from our producer Jack Weinberger at that time the American League a live dog around plus 260 on the FanDuel Sportsbook. And as we showed you yesterday, so many different ways of attacking the All-Star game from that odds perspective, which feels weird to say for an exhibition matchup. But the team to score first to win the game was the yes, minus 230. The no was plus 184. That also cashes a ticket. Smart handicappers will tell you, anytime it seems like there's a 50-50 shot, or at least not a full-blown guarantee that one outcome happens in a yes-no bet, Take the one with plus money for a small sprinkle and see how it plays out. That's what we saw yesterday at the Major League Baseball All-Star Game. The first MLB All-Star Game inside Dodger Stadium since 1980. But now it's time to reset for the second half. Again, the only full day we have off during this Major League Baseball All-Star break. We had games on Sunday. We had a home run derby on Monday, the Midsummer Classic yesterday, a full day off today. The Dodgers and the Giants back in action tomorrow and some other games around the bigs as well. So let's look at the American League pennant odds and see where it stacks up heading into the second half of this Major League Baseball regular season. Because as you can see there, there is a clear distinction in the top two prices from the rest of the field in the American League. The Yankees are the favorites at plus 140. New York, the best record in all of the bigs throughout the first half of this MLB campaign, 64-28. and 28, With a win total now live on the FanDuel Sportsbook at 105.5 trying to get to 114 if they can. That would match a franchise record, the pinstripe set back in 1998. So there's a clear distinction there with the Yankees price at plus 140, 60 cents behind them, the Astros at plus 200. But then a far drop off to the Blue Jays at plus 950, seven and a half dollars of difference between Houston and Toronto. And right now, Toronto is firmly in that wild card race with the sixth best record in the American League currently. The Rays have the third best record heading into the second half of this season. And the Mariners on a 14-game win streak, the fourth best record. So let's focus also on the American League Central and how that divisional race will play in to the pennant odds. Because as we get to the All-Star break, it's the Minnesota Twins with a two-game lead in the American League Central over the Cleveland Guardians, a three-game advantage over the Chicago White Sox, who entered the All-Star break, ending out the first half with a big series victory. Did the Southsiders have over the Twins? This is by far the closest divisional race we have in the American League. The Yankees own a 13-game lead over the Rays. The Astros, a nine-game lead over Seattle, despite the fact the M's have won 14 straight games. So let's keep up those divisional odds in the American League Central because a point needs to be made here right now. Minnesota, plus 120 as the favorite slightly, but because of the White Sox inching their way back into this race, they're only five cents behind at plus 125. As we entered the All-Star break, this was the only divisional market available on the FanDuel Sportsbook because of how hefty those divisional leads were for New York in the AL East and Houston in the American League West. So only five cents of difference is this the time to buy in on the White Sox only three games out of that top spot in the American League Central the odds would indicate that might be the case because Chicago entered this year as a minus 210 favorite to win the American League Central it was the best odds at the time in the preseason of any team in the AL to win its respective division so as we 
correlate our markets here for the divisional odds to updated win totals live right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook. You will see this race is neck and neck. Only five cents of difference in the odds board for that divisional crown in the American League Central. And the White Sox and the Twins have the same exact win total for the rest of this Major League Baseball campaign. 84 and a half for both Chicago and Minnesota. The under the same amount of juice On that side at minus 116, the Guardians three games back of both the Twins and the White Sox, at least according to the win totals, at 81.5. And And as it stacks up right now in terms of outright wins, Minnesota 50-44 and this year, Cleveland 46-44, and and the White Sox 46-46, and where it stands at the All-Star break. So will it just be one team out of the American League Central making its way to the AL playoffs whoever wins the division that might be the case because we have many teams in contention for those wild card spots in the American League again an update to the playoff format now in MLB three divisional winners three wild card spots an expanded playoff might the Baltimore Orioles yes those Baltimore Orioles have something to say about a wild card spot in the American League it will be fascinating to study the O's throughout the second half of this MLB campaign. That updated live team win total is 75 and a half. That is 14 games up from the preseason number on Baltimore. It was the lowest in all of the major leagues at 61 and a half. Now 75 in a hook, but you can still see, as the odds indicate, not giving all that much love to the O's in terms of actually being a playoff contender and making that postseason push. Still 12-1, to 1, plus 1,200 for Baltimore to find its way into the American League postseason. And as we look at the wild card standings right now, the Orioles are three and a half games behind those Toronto Blue Jays. Toronto owning that sixth and final spot as it stands. The Red Sox two games back, the Guardians two and a half back of where things are in the wild card standings right now in the American League. Quickly, let's look at the National League because the pennant odds are really starting to favor the Dodgers, but does that give us value on the other sides that we have here in this league race in the NL? The Dodgers, a short price at plus 155. LA, the best record in the National League, the second best record in all of the bigs. But the Mets are not all that far behind in terms of their record, but plus 320 in terms of that odds perspective. And the Braves, the Mets have a lead over Atlanta in the National League East. Atlanta is plus 430. So does that give us value on New York and the Braves? Well, again, we must correlate here with where things stand from a win total perspective because a win total is a regular season market. The National League pennant is a postseason market by the time we get to the playoffs. But this might show us, based on those win totals, what the playoff seeding will look like in the National League. And by those numbers, the Dodgers should be in pole position right now with a win total of 103 in a hook and the over having the slight bit of juice to be that top seed in the National League. The Mets five games back of that from a win total perspective, 98 and a half, but three games in front of Atlanta, who is at 95 and a half, for that win total and in the National League East standings right now the Mets own a two and a half game lead over the Braves at the all-star break eight and a half in front is New York over the Philadelphia Phillies so as we look at those National League East odds right now that are live on the FanDuel Sportsbook the Mets back to a pretty substantial odds on favorite at minus 195 just a little bit shy of two dollars Atlanta plus 165 the second best price the Phillies 30 to 1 but Philadelphia is slightly favored at minus 120 to make the National League postseason we'll continue to reset here at the all-star break the only full day off we have in Major League Baseball as we preview the second half of the season fully in our second hour with FanDuel's Jim Saunas but next Mike Blewett joins the show here to look at the NFL futures market up next Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 
pregame, pregame. Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Liu, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Pro Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free at SICscore.com. The early line. But overall, I mean, this is as good a performance as you're going to find in professional sports. When you talk about like the dunk competition, this is by far better than the dunk competition at this point. These guys are getting after it and enjoying themselves. They, they definitely are. I'm not sure if there really is any all-star side event that stacks up right now to the home yeah. run derby. It's, it's in a way, it's, it's simplicity is what gets the job done. Only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. For right now, Matt Carpenter, if you had the uh, the fortitude to pick him up off the waivers, what an unbelievable beginning to the season he is having for the New York Yankees. Batting 350, 13 home runs. I mean, this guy could not record a hit, George, for the rest of the season. You could drop him. He could get hurt. It doesn't matter. He has already boosted you so far up the standings. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. I was with a heavy today, right? And I told him that USC was getting the bulk of the action on winning a national championship as they stole that coach from Norman, Oklahoma, that he's going to come to Los Angeles and win a national championship in his first year with that crappy football team. Has anyone not noticed how crappy they've been the last 10 years? The Sports Grid Network. It's starting to feel like football in the air. The countdown to training camp continues here live on the morning after on this Wednesday on Sports Grid. Rookies reporting in big waves all across the National Football League this week, getting ready for camp. Vets will be next week. So helping us handicap the futures market where we stand on the eve of training camp, truly starting, officially kicking off a new NFL season in 2022. It is our guy, the host of Football Full Circle, each and every Sunday right here on Sports Grid. It is Mike Blewett, one of the finest handicappers of the futures market from a football perspective that I know. Blewett, thank you for joining us here on this Wednesday. Nice of you to say, Ben. Good to be here with you on a summer Wednesday morning. Uh, we got to catch those Wednesday beers at some point uh, this Ooh. summer, but uh, maybe probably not at 930 in the morning. Maybe we'll wait till a post-show situation. But training camp is upon us. That's what we're here to talk about. Obviously exciting. we got a Hall of Fame game just a few weeks away, so let's do it. We'll sit over some brews and discuss the futures market, like where Let's things might stand for Super Bowl 57 in Glendale, Arizona. And Blue, you've been yeah. on a couple of times here in this offseason looking at the prices in the NFL futures market. As it stands right now, just about a week, maybe in general, out from the real start of training camp, as you look at these odds for the Super Bowl this upcoming season, do you feel any differently now than maybe you did a couple of months ago? I don't think so. Generally, like I've said in the past, I think I do, like many others, expect the Bills to be right there in the end. I thought 
going into the playoffs last year, I had I thought they had the best opportunity to win. But this futures market isn't about picking one team and trying to predict who's going to win the Super Bowl as we sit here in mid-July. It's about trying to find positions that you can or should take and some that maybe you should wait on to maximize the spread of options you have over the futures market. This isn't about cashing a lottery ticket. It's about maybe spreading some of your investment around and ultimately cashing a profit at the end of the year. The Bills sit at the top of the list, but the beginning of their schedule is very tough. I don't expect them to run clean in September, October. So I think you can get a better number uh, after the first six weeks or so of the Bills. And if they end up 5-1 and one or 6-0 and oh out of the gate, then you missed out on the opportunity to get them at 6.5-1, to one, and you can blame me or Ben on the morning after. Yeah, blame me. I'll take the blame here. Mike Blewett is our guest. You do not blame him. You blame me. But I think what Blewett has to say and what he has reiterated every time he has been on in terms of looking at the futures market is not – grabbing that dart and making sure you have the value of the Rams at 11 to 1 and if that pays off by the time we get to February that's your ticket it's about finding your paths to a Super Bowl contender and making sure you have a couple of prices out there that you can work with throughout the season it's a long hold from now where we stand in the middle of July all the way until the middle of February so that's why you have to evaluate which price makes the most sense and maybe a couple of prices that truly stand out to you and blew it to round out the top five in the Super Bowl market the Green Bay Packers the number one overall seed in the NFC each of the last two years 12 to 1 right now for Green Bay entering this 2022 NFL season and a reason that they are always up there and as a perennial powerhouse in the NFC for that top spot they have owned the NFC North and as the odds would indicate for 2022 that will be the same story minus 170 on Aaron Rodgers and the pack a heavy odds on favorite price to win the NFC North for a fourth consecutive season is it too strong of a number in favor of Green Bay I don't feel that it's too strong of a number to win the division I I do wonder what kind of success they will find in the playoffs since it has been Mm. a struggle over the past few years but I think a lot of there's a few teams out there that have made significant changes and people are starting to buzz about the Vikings are one of those teams I would throw the Broncos into that mix as well Uh, and the Raiders, whom I've talked about also. But the Raiders I like more than the other two because they are not receiving as good a numbers as the other two. The Broncos are 17-1 to to win the Super Bowl, and Nathaniel Hackett has never been the head coach of an NFL game. Ditto Kevin O'Connell. Could work out. They might be the next Kevin Stefanski where they arrive on the scene and things get fixed. But I do think that's a lot of the optimism in Minnesota is that it's just not Mike Zimmer, right? We don't have the same old boring offense. They ran at a a pace per play last year in the top five or seven in the NFL, and we're still run heavy. So they were running a lot of plays or calling a lot of plays, but they were still heavy on the run. They were limiting Kirk Cousins. Now, for all the criticisms that Kirk Cousins levies from a lot of people, he doesn't play well in prime time. What have they actually done in the playoffs? I get it. I'll be the first one to say, I feel like there's an annual discussion about, hey, is Kirk Cousins actually really good? And then he plays a primetime game and and they lose by 20 and then they're nine and eight at the end of the year. You're like, you know what? Maybe he's not that good. But the reality has been he's a top 10 to 12 quarterback at worst. And he's got all of these dynamic weapons. They should be playing a more up-tempo offense. And I think Kevin O'Connell can fix that. That's the reason for the optimism. That it's not Mike Zimmer and it is Kevin McCon- Kevin O'Connell. They could fix a bunch of that stuff. But is it enough to overtake the Packers? I don't think so. The Packers were missing their best defender in Jair Alexander most of the season last year. I think they get some players back. We'll obviously be focused on the loss of Devontae Adams. But I think with Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon and hopefully Alan Lazard stepping up, I think they'll be able to cure some of that. They just won't be as high-powered as they were in the past. That said, they're probably better defensively than they were a few years ago. So, Blue, let's start with the expectation for Aaron Rodgers, Matt LaFleur, and the Green Bay Packers before we make that case for the Minnesota Vikings. Again, the Packers have won this division in the NFC North three straight years, eight 
of the last 11 seasons, and that's why they're minus 170 at the moment. But you see that team win total. It's the third highest on the board on the FanDuel Sportsbook. 10.5, the over, tons of juice at minus 160. They have the second best price to make the postseason in all of the NFL, only behind the Bucks at minus 500, and tied for the second best odds to win an NFC championship at 5-1 to one, alongside the reigning NFC champs, the Los Angeles Rams, behind the favorites, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who are plus 320. Without Devontae Adams, what should the expectation be for the Packers in 2022? I mean, 13 and 4 last year, they effectively gave up the last game and still finished with the best record in the NFL tied with the Tampa Bay Bucks. So uh, people are going to expect regression without Devontae Adams. I think that's completely fair. I, my biggest criticism of Aaron Rodgers, and it's not a heavy one, is that especially during crunch time and in that playoff game and in other crucial games, he has lacked trust in the depth of his options. He trusts Aaron Jones, obviously, and Devontae Adams, but yep. Robert Tunyon was hurt last year. And in key moments, he didn't look to Marquez Valdez, Scantling, and Alan Lazard. He didn't really trust them in those moments. So he's going to have to do that moving forward with Lazard and others uh, for them to be as efficient an offense as they can be. Now, their road schedule, when you take a look at it, they start out at Minnesota. They do have Tampa and Buffalo on the road. Those are two of the favorites in the entire yeah. NFL. Uh, but outside of that, you obviously have the divisional games in Detroit and Chicago at Philly. They get Miami late in the year. They're actually playing on Christmas Day uh, against Miami at 1 o'clock. But it's not a terrible road schedule, but there are a few tough games in there. Not terrible, mainly because... Uh, the bottom of their division is pretty bad. Uh, are the Lions going to improve? Possibly. They knocked off the Packers last year in Week 18. But I don't expect the Lions to make a, an aggressive leap from year one to year two in the Dan Campbell era. The Bears, uh, you you and I could sit there and go through the Bears roster and wonder how they improved from Justin Fields' rookie season to this year. Other than a coaching change, they didn't fix the offensive line. There are myriad issues in Chicago. I think they're headed in the wrong direction, frankly, in year two of the Justin Fields era. So you're having to look at this schedule, what kind of home games they're getting. Uh, there's a three-game stretch where they're on the road in October, early November at Washington, at Buffalo, at Detroit, all in a row. But that is post playing the Pats, Jets, and Giants all at home. So they have these crazy streaks in the schedule. My expectations of the Packers, Ben, bottom line is that I think they're going to be right around this number. I would probably pin them at 11 wins coming off the 13. I don't feel great about the over because 10 and 7 is in the realm of possibility, but I would be an over better in this scenario. It's probably just not one of my strongest plays. Blue, and I'm glad you brought up the Bears and the Lions because we have seen some movement in the bottom half of the NFC North Divisional Market. And we like to do this here, where we take win totals in the offseason and make theoretical match bets. Both numbers, 6.5 for Chicago, 6.5 for Detroit, are the same, but the juice is slightly different on the under for the Bears. So, Blue, it, who wins more games in 2022, the Bears or the Lions? It's a tough battle, but I'm a hard Bears under guy this year, so I'm going to go with the Lions. I don't think the Bears get to 6.5 or 6. I think they'll be a five-win team, so call the Lions 6 and 11. Maybe they scrape out 7 and 10. The Bears are going to win five games this year. Detroit last year, 11 and 6 against the spread. The third best record throughout the regular season in the NFL. As we always say, Mike, good teams win, great teams cover. And if the fighting yeah. Dan Campbell can bite a few more kneecaps to make those close and competitive games where they covered a big number mean a win. Maybe Dan Campbell looks pretty good in the coach of the year market, but you have to generally reach the postseason. At least the last five winners of this award have. And speaking of the postseason, we'll look at the wild card races in the NFL. Yes, even here in the middle of July to find value in terms of make playoff odds on the FanDuel Sportsbook, including those Minnesota Vikings. That's next here on The Grid.
Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare bets. they do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full Buffalo. circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for And Diamond being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You could take the money line. And we either go to San Jose too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm gonna go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game live. Prime. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are gonna be all good in game six at home. Oh boy, you wanna give the eight and a half points with a desperate team facing a little Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The morning after. That it means more for the league where it always just means more to add Texas and Oklahoma than the Big Ten adding USC and UCLA. Texas comes in with its own network uh, that has mm. its own set of advertisers and money and everything else that they'll fold into the SEC. I know you as a perennial uh, college football playoff team contender. Will they be that in the SEC? No, but they are a team that brings that sort of prestige with them. The Sports Grid Network. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Pharrell, coast to coast. He is finished. He'll come back next year. It'll happen again, and he'll never pitch again. That'll be the end of it. I, I think that Strasburg had his, he had his moment in that World Series when the Nationals won it. He gave it all out, that, and he, he had injury problems before that. And now he just hasn't been able to stay on the field since. Uh, it's unfortunate, but I think that he is finished. The Sports Grid Network. The date is Wednesday, July 20th, 2022, here live on the morning after on Sports Grid. And yes, on July 20th, as training camps open up across the National Football League with rookies starting to report and veterans next week, we are going to talk the NFL postseason and the wild card races that we might see in each conference, taking out the divisional favorites and the divisional frontrunners, looking for where the value might be and those make playoff odds. Mike Blewett is back for a second straight segment here on this Wednesday TMA. And Blewett, all offseason long, we have talked about how difficult the conference known as the AFC is going to be this year. Divisions like the AFC West and the AFC North and trying to find your way through that division just with an overall record good enough that might put you in the hunt for one of those postseason spots. So let's start in the AFC, where right now there are four teams with pretty good minus money prices to make the playoffs, starting with the Chargers at minus 162. The Broncos also out of the AFC West, near a dollar and a half at minus 146. The reigning AFC champions, the Cincinnati Bengals, not the favorites in the AFC North, but still minus 144 to reach the playoffs. And Tennessee, who was the top overall seed in this conference last year in the postseason, is minus 110. So, Blew it. so many options that we have in the AFC in what will be a gauntlet of a competitive conference this year. Who are a few names to keep an eye on that you think will be in the hunt all year long? 
So it's re what's really interesting is how bullish the market is on the AFC West. An assumption that three teams are going to make the playoffs from there, right? Uh, and we have the Ravens and the Bengals both as playoff teams. We have the Chargers, Chiefs, and Broncos as playoff teams. And then the Bills. And then where are we on the Colts? Yeah, the Colts are at minus 172. So the Colts' odds of all the teams that we could talk about in the AFC are the ones that I've seen the most dramatic shift. I think people are out on the Titans, which are on this board uh, that we're discussing now. I would say that, let me start from the bottom, the Titans at minus 110 would be a really difficult bet for me to make for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is for about four years running, they're the hardest team in the NFL to bet on. Week to week, yep. season to season, they they were the number one seed last year. No, not one person had that. Nobody. Not even with five weeks to go did anyone have that. So they're a very difficult team to predict. I think they they win games in a lot of really interesting ways because I think Vrabel is a pretty good coach. I just think they're finally at a point where the talent has swung a little too far to one side on the offensive side of the ball. If they can go mm -hmm. Derrick Henry style and win some games that way, though, it, just, it should be noted. As far as the Broncos and the Chargers are concerned, we're dealing with Brandon Staley, who's the favorite for coach of the year. And you and I were both talking during the break where I just wish he was more successful last year because they screwed up so many games in the fourth quarter, just like they did under Anthony Lynn. And with the Broncos, like I said in the previous segment, we're dealing with a first-year head coach, Nathaniel Hackett. He's a longtime coach, and he's worked in successful organizations. He's also worked in some brutal ones. So... Uh, there, there's some sort of guarantee that the Broncos bring in Russell Wilson with a first-year head coach, and it's all going to work. I, I would just yeah. submit as Exhibit A, the Jets did the same thing. They brought in a new quarterback with a brand-new head coach, and they were one of the worst teams in the league. Granted, Zach Wilson is not Russell Wilson. But uh, it, there's just not a guarantee that, we'll, that we, it will all work out. Uh, it would have to be – it is important, and you'll see this for those of you out there drafting in fantasy – People are bullish on the Broncos. It's important that the Broncos, however, though, Ben, don't run the old Seahawks offense. That's the reason he's not there anymore. They have to try mm -hmm. to run something more up-tempo, utilize Judy and Sutton and Albert O and Tim Patrick and get guys out in, in the passing game. It's important for yep. them to be more dynamic than they have been. They have some really good stalwart defensive players in Simmons and Chubb. So I, I just think that there's a lot of talent there, but I find people being extremely bullish on the AFC West and maybe looking at the wrong teams. I mean, a dollar and a half is pretty much where the Chargers, the Broncos, and even the Bengals all hover around in terms of being favored slightly to make the postseason. Where we stand, again, on July 20th, those are pretty substantial odds before a football game has even been played. So when you think of that, Blue, it's something weird is going to happen. Not all three of those teams are just a certainty to occupy the three wild card spots in the AFC. So what about the teams that are just right behind? Currently on the outside looking in according to the odds, but certainly will be a factor in the postseason race as we would believe. Now, I would not pay any money still on the Cleveland Browns. They're plus 138, but the Dolphins plus 140. The Pats 20 cents behind at plus 160. And the Raiders have seen some positive movement in this marketplace. Now at plus 170 for a Vegas team that made the playoffs a season ago and only got better in my estimation throughout this offseason. So, Blewett, of these teams in plus money, who do you think can make the postseason? I think the reason you're taking a position on the Browns is the same reason I would have told you a couple of weeks ago. I think the Panthers are an interesting team to take a position on because there could be a moment in the near future where those odds change dramatically if we find out Deshaun Watson is only suspended six games as opposed to 17 in the full season. The odds would change dramatically for the Browns. So you can yep. pick up value just based on that, obviously. And if Deshaun Watson plays 11 games, it'll put the Browns in a good position, assuming that he plays the way he played when he was with Houston two years ago uh, and three years ago. Uh, as far as the Dolphins are concerned, it's probably the team on this graphic well, uh, there's probably second as far as the teams I'm bullish on on this graphic. Uh, 
I, I do like the Raiders at this price. I, I think that to your point about them improving, they've added Chandler Jones. They have a new head coach that I think most of us trust, a new GM that's made some really significant changes. And I think that the Raiders are on the upswing. As much as I'll raise my hand and say I've been a Derek Carr detractor in the past, he has played well for two seasons mm-hmm. straight, especially last year. And I think that the GM is the new GM is is making strides in order to try to improve this roster, uh, not the least of which is Chandler Jones and Devontae Adams. So uh, I think they're going to be in a better position this year. I think they can fight for a wild card, and at plus 170, I like that price. The Patriots, I think you'll always have Belichick impacting the price because we trust him as a coach, and they did make the playoffs last year despite having holes on the roster. Uh, I think it will be difficult for them to have a dynamic offense. And a lot of times when you see teams go for a big free agency salary spending spree, it does help in year one, but there isn't a track record of success in year two and beyond. So Mm -hmm. there's an immediate bump, and I just think you need to keep fulfilling that roster, backfilling that roster with draft picks and others, and there have been some questionable ones. The Patriots 2018 draft class, poof, no Chase Winovich. No Nikhil Harry, that thing disappeared into thin air. And when you start missing on entire draft classes, it does weaken your roster over time. I had concerns about them this year, but at plus 160, I think that's a Belichick tax. People, the, the odds would be longer if not for that. And Miami, guy had positions on Miami to make the playoffs last year. They were pretty darn close. I do Very think close. they made great additions. We, You and I are both going to sit here and have questions on whether or not Tua is the right guy to work mm-hmm. with these options in Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell. But we have to see how Mike McDaniel is going to do. we got another first-year head coach. Uh, question marks there. Ownership issues. I have concerns. But I think if, you're, if I'm filling out my – AFC playoff teams today. I think Miami slots in as the final wild card. Blewett, do not include me in any questions about Tua Tunga Bailoa. I don't need Tua Non coming after both of us here on this show on the morning after. Quickly here, Blewett, before we flip it over. Generally, I'm to a the supporter. NFC, I'm not, I don't beat him up. Yeah. Generally, I'm a supporter right. of him. So I would never say a bad word about Tua Tunga Bailoa until we might see something later on in this NFL season. All right, quickly here, Blue, before we flip it over to the NFC, we see the terrible towel over your right shoulder. The Pittsburgh Steelers, a playoff team, each of the last two years, six of the last eight seasons will have a new quarterback, whether it's Mitchell Trubisky or the rookie in Kenny Pickett, plus 330 to make the playoffs this year. What's the outlook like for the Steelers this year? Uh, he's never been under 500. Mike Tomlin as a head coach, yep. I think. I think they'll battle. I, my, my. The reason I would be any, any kind of optimistic level about them is that I still think people overlook how good this defense is. It's what saved them last year. The offense stunk last year. I think it'll have some real challenges this year, considering we're not sure who's going to be the quarterback at the moment. Uh, but I think you can throw a little bit of a dart here. I would also note that on FanDuel, you can parlay teams to make playoffs. So you can use somebody that you feel is a lock, like the Bills, to make the playoffs, anchor them with the Steelers. I understand a parlay is asking for two outcomes, but you can now get that at plus 417, for example, Steelers and Bills. Or even if you like the Raiders and you want to bump their odds up a little bit, Raiders, Bills to make the playoffs, plus 225. Play around with it a little bit. I understand it's, again, asking for a parlay type of outcome, but we feel great about the Bills making the playoffs. Uh, I'd say the Steelers are probably on the outside looking in, but I don't think they fall off a cliff, Ben. I still think it's an 8-9 eight, nine, eight, nine win team. Blew it quickly here as well. To start off our conversation about the NFC wildcard teams, again, teams that are not divisional favorites at the moment, the San Francisco 49ers are minus 220 to make the playoffs right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook. The seventh best odds in the entire National Football League. Do you think that is too lofty a number on the Niners entering 2022? I think it is too lofty, but I'm not doubting them that much. I still, I think this is a really great roster top to bottom. There are questions about Trey Lance from some folks, but I, I don't expect as big a drop-off as some are saying 
from Jimmy G to Trey Lance. Even if Lance isn't as good as Shanahan wants him to be, he's been good about hiding his quarterbacks in the past, and I think they'll be successful. I do like them to make the playoffs, even though I I would agree this is a pretty short number. I mean, they made the NFC Championship game last year with Jimmy Garoppolo, not because of Jimmy G, but also not in spite of him either. So there shouldn't be that much drop-off to Trey Lance, but a big number on a second-year quarterback who really hasn't played all that much in the NFL. All right, quickly here, Blewett. The NFC wild card race. The Eagles have the best odds outside of the Niners at minus 178. We talked about the Vikings at minus 110, and then some plus money prices you will see for Arizona, New Orleans, and Washington. If you had to pick two out of this bunch, which teams are you taking? I think the Eagles are going to win that division, so they're Ooh. in to make the playoffs, and that's the bet I would make uh, is for them to make the playoffs. And you want me to throw another one on there of that group? Yes. Yes, I do. I'm not feeling great about all of the options, but were the Vikes on there? I, I missed it. I missed the they were. graphic. We're, so that's it. Vikings that would be were the other there. team. I, I think they are probably the seventh team to get in. Could be even a little higher than that, but I'll, I'll take the Vikings – and the Eagles from that graphic. I think commanders, too many question marks. I'm off the Saints. I think there are too many changes. They'd have to win mm-hmm. it old school style. And I think there's too many question marks regarding Kamara and Thomas. Tons of future markets perspective. With Mike Blewett today. Blewett, thank you so much. We round out hour one up next. Thanks, buddy. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game pass. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. Major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The early line. When you watch J-Rod's opening round, you go, oh, yeah, everyone's going to get their bonus time, and it's really going to be a four-minute first round. Julio Rodriguez kind of teased a little bit there. He made it look so easy. It was not that easy for almost everybody else that followed. Nobody had as big of a round one as Julio Rodriguez did. Only on SportsGrid. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team I keep coming back to is the Mets. And I come back to the Mets because they are all in right now. They have two starting pitchers, one of which is the best pitcher in baseball when he's on the mound coming back, and Jacob DeGrom, who might opt out of his contract. The other is Max Scherzer, who's an older pitcher. They are in right now for this season. Juan Soto, you can back up the truck with the prospects the Mets have, whether it's Alvarez, Beatty, um, Mauricio. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Professor Rick Hara, your daily numbers game in Inverness, Scotland, taking stock in the ratings of the international events that have just been held and what will be held. Wimbledon are averaging 1.4 to 1.6 in America with two non-Americans, Kyrgios and Djokovic, competitive match, but heading in the right direction as far as ratings are concerned. And then there's the Open. Tiger Woods headlines the first day 1.2 to 2.4 watching on ESPN and it's uh, streaming really significant numbers and very important and the Friday Saturday Sunday numbers off the charts economic impact here heat wave and economics off the charts as well bottom line is uh, also heading to the US not the US the British senior open which is over in Glen Eagles. That'll add icing to the cake. Very good for the
Rounding out the opening hour of the morning after live on this Wednesday on Sports Grid and Sirius XM channel 159. That's the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM all across the Sports Grid Network. I am Ben Stevens. So a ton of focus right now on this Wednesday, July 20th, because it's the full day off in the Major League Baseball All-Star break as we get ready for football. It's very hot outside right now, but soon that warmth in the air will change to a fall crisp as we get ready for a new football season and the training camp countdown in the National Football League. So a big focus this year will be trying to win a divisional title and setting yourself up for a postseason appearance. What is the best division in football? I think I know which way the public is going to lean, but we had to ask anyway right now and fade the public. And sure enough, I was correct. What's the best division in the National Football League? The four options presented to you at Sports Grid TV on Twitter in this Fade the Public poll, the AFC West, the AFC North, the NFC West, or other. And right now, 62% of the public is saying the AFC West. It makes sense. I mean, look at what the AFC West has in store this year. The Chiefs with Patrick Mahomes. The Chargers with Justin Herbert about to embark on his third NFL season. Tons of optimism in Los Angeles. They also add Khalil Mack and J.C. Jackson on the defensive side of the football. At the Mile High City, Russell Wilson is now the starting quarterback for the Denver Broncos. Tons of optimism offensively, but a new head coach in Nathaniel Hackett. Keep that in mind. And the Raiders... Somehow forgotten with Derek Carr as the starting quarterback and adding Devontae Adams and adding Chandler Jones on defense. Yes, that will be the most gauntlet division we see in all of the NFL. And that's how the public feels right now. And you can see a ton of those teams with pretty good odds to win Super Bowl 57 this upcoming NFL season. Our number two of the morning after live on this Wednesday on Sports Grid is up next following a Sports Grid news update from Alex Fasano. 